I think after that game, I mm. think he stayed in the stadium. Imagine if Man United went on to win. That could have potentially been two Ballon d'Ors for Ronaldo. I don't mind giving it to Jose Mourinho. Okay, you know what? Cool. We'll give it to Jose. So Jose pause, Mourinho. Pause, 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 pause. Yo, it's your boy H Black the Source, Harry Pinero. Welcome back to the Inside Scoop. Of course, I'm joined by my co-host, the one and only Culture Cams is in the building. We just hit 10K subs. Yay. We just hit 10K subs, mate. Yay. Do you know what I mean? So Yay. thank you to every Yay. single uh, person that has subscribed. Yes. Um, keep subscribing, man, because we're here for the long run. So um, yeah, appreciate keep you guys, liking man. as well. Yeah. You guys don't realize how much those likes help. Those likes help us get more subscribers, help us on the algorithm mm. to be on the up next pages and all this yeah. type of stuff. So keep hitting those likes, man. Honestly, it's so important. Let's try and get 1K likes an episode at least. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. That'll be amazing. Culture Cams has been doing this for a while. Um, in my opinion, one of the best to be doing it. And <laughs> he just got the call up. Hmm. He has just got the call up. Now, hmm. if you're used to seeing Harry Pinero on Saturday social, but not today. No, 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 not hmm. on this Saturday. The one and only Culture Cams has got his first appearance. Thank you. You get thank me? You. You've accompanied you. me to two of them. Yes. And I feel like you've always felt like that's where you need to be. Hmm. Now, it's not the... You know, oh, I've made it, yeah. but it's a it's a great step. How do you feel about getting that that call up to do Saturday Social this Saturday? Bro, you seen that picture that went viral when when Ronaldo is holding the Ballon d'Or? Yeah. And Benzema is just behind him, yeah. like, <laughs> just applauding. <laughs> Benzema just behind him, like, all right, this is what I got to do to get there. Yeah, that's how I feel, man. Yeah. Going and seeing you there. I'm yeah. just there, you know what I mean? I know that's where I can be as well, but of course, it's all about supporting my boy and yeah, yeah, happy yeah, for you as well. That's the most important side of it. But yeah, man, hey, listen, I'm buzzing. My first nah, TV nah, it's appearance. Sick, it's sick, it's hey, sick. listen, man, I've been watching Sky Bro, come on, that's the yeah, staple that's, that's, of your yeah, life. Of course, so of course. to be on there is mad and like my family's going to be able to watch it. My mum just flew into the country for oh, my, wow, my, my niece, so she's going to be able to see that. It's insane, bro. Make sure you got a trim, though. Bro, where do you think, bro. Where do you think I'm going after this? Yeah. <laughs> Where do you think I'm going after this, bro? I'm going need straight there. Need that there. sharp edges. Straight Get them there, to, bro. You don't need it though, but yeah. tell them add fibers, bro. Yeah. I'm telling, <laughs> bro. bro, bro, bro I'm bro, telling bro, you, bro. bro. I'm you gonna be mad. So yeah, like I'm looking forward to. It. Actually, I'm even looking for a stylist, mate. I'm wow, for, whoa. I need some drip. Yeah, yeah. I'm going on clean, bro. <laughs> My first TV appearance, bro. Well, is this gonna so, be your first one? First TV appearance, wow. bro. Now you do well. You do well. Honestly, I think there's there's nobody better suited to do that job. And um. Sticking with cams, of course, uh, FCM podcast is now back. Now, the streets have been asking for Mawa, Fuad, and you. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Liaz is going to be doing mm -hmm. the producing and stuff, but how does that feel to be back, man? Because they're always in the comments asking, Bro. where are the boys? And then they're back now. Bro, it's so good to be back, honestly, because look, that's where the foundations were, bro. 100%. That's how I started this thing. You know what I mean? That's how I, that's how I found you. Exactly. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's, that's how everything started. So, like, it was a bit annoying where, you know, we knew we got something cooking mm. and people f are thinking, you lot have gone big time now. Now yeah, you've all, yeah. Maze is doing his thing with Chelsea, yeah. Fuad is doing his thing, SDS, all this stuff. I'm here with you and mm. JD and stuff. And people just thought we've abandoned it. So it was a bit annoying seeing all them comments, but it's like, listen, we got something coming. So it's so good to be back. And the reception has been mad because when we changed from the name, mm. I was scared, bro. I was like... That's why it was a bit of a delay as well, because I was so scared to change the name. I thought people were going to like, just kind of not, not attached mm -hmm. to it. But not one person has said, oh, we missed the name. No one cares, bro. Yeah, you it's about I mean? the content it's, more than anything. Exactly. So the love, this period has made me realize, yo, we got some loyal, we got some loyal fans here. No, nah, it's so incredible, man. That, man. I remember the first time I actually like met everyone mm -hmm. was when you shouted, man. I don't think you thought I was going to roll. It was, it was a oh, Sunday. Yeah, yeah. It was a Sunday. I remember like, and I remember I was <laughs> knackered, but yeah. I was like, I, I need to be on this 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 mm. podcast. And it was a great episode. I think yeah. United was still crap then. So, yeah, oh, so, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it's, been, it's been a while. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but anyway, so moving forward, uh, this week actually, mm. I can I think I can announce it because it'll be out tomorrow. I'm gonna be hosting uh, the FC24 launch. With uh, Young there. Philly. Yeah, we'll be there. It's going to be, be crazy. There. And you know what's so mad about that 360 moment, yeah? Mm -hmm. Like when I first came into the industry, yeah? I remember I got invited to one, yeah? And it was yeah. Philly and Mitch hosting it. Sick. Um, and no, Philly's been doing his thing. No, nah, come on, time, bro. Pastor, he's genuinely a pioneer in this. I'm Jeez. not going to lie. Like, he's been doing this for a while, him and Mitch as well. Mm -hmm. So, I, and I never thought in my life that I would be hosting a. Yeah, man. What a massive event that is, bro. bro. The launch of FC24, formerly known as FIFA as the well. The first ever one. 
the bro. first ever EF, EAFC. So it's You're mad. making history, bro. Yeah, no, it's historic, man. So I just feel like the football space right now, yeah, I just think it's in an elite place. Mm. Like everyone's just doing their thing and I, you can see how it's a community thing. Mm -hmm. Like Sharky will help me, you man will help mm -hmm. me. So yeah, I just, I'm just really happy about that. It's gonna be sick, man. But sick. as you can see behind us, there's two iconic jerseys, um, two players that have won the Champions League, two players that have also won Ballon d'Ors as well Ooh. because of their incredible seasons. So it's only right that today we do a Champions League edition. I'm gonna leave it with Camps to take mm. you through what we're gonna be doing today. Cool. So listen, today, people, we are doing a Champions League 2000s edition. Mm. So obviously we didn't want to, we did, we know this is going to come out tomorrow. So we don't, the games are happening today where mm. we're shooting this on the Wednesday. So we don't want to give you anything outdated. So we say, listen, Champions League's back. We're all in the Champions League spirit, whether we win or lose. Don't no, no, forget about the winning. Don't worry about that. You know what I mean? <laughs> you see our reactions on Twitter. You know what I mean? But... Other than that, so we thought let's do a 2000s edition, which is a bit evergreen, which is a bit like nostalgic. And we thought 2000s the best edition because we were going thinking about the 2010s, but mm. every answer felt like Real Madrid, Barcelona, yeah. Messi, Ronaldo. And the one thing that we love about the 2000s is that nobody dominated the 2000s. No player, no team, no manager. No, It was just literally... A free for all. It was a yeah. free for all. What an era. So we've created a little list of the criteria that we're going to, or the discussions we're going to have. Uh, I'm going to read through them. There's biggest moment of the 2000s, best team, best final, best manager, best player of the 2000s, and the best underdog story. So just for clarification, so people know what we're talking about from the decade, we are doing it from the start of 2000, so the start of the millennium. So the first Champions League winners were Bayern Munich. They won against Valencia, and it ends at 9 10 with Inter Milan, winning the Champions League against Bayern Munich. Yes. So that's the decade that we're doing it. Yeah. You ready? Let's go. Where do you want to start? Let's um, start with, what do you want to start with? Something light. I want to save the the arguments because we're yeah. defo arguing today. Mm, yeah. Okay. Until uh, later. So I would say, you want to start with manager? Yeah. yeah. All right. That was torn between two, but I'll let you go first. Okay. Interesting um, to know who you, who you got. So I'm going to go with, yeah, because Porto won the Champions mm. League, yeah, in that era where nobody expected them to. And mm -hmm. I believe that from that, that win, Jose Mourinho was born. Yes. Um, I think the run that he had, obviously he beat Man United at Old Trafford, um, getting to the final as well with that incredible group of players that mm -hmm. he kind of took all of them to Chelsea. So yeah, I, for me, I'm, I'm actually just gonna, I think I'm gonna stick with Jose. Jose. Just because I just think out of all of the wins, that was probably the most underrated one. Mm. And he actually went on to become a better manager. Because mm -hmm. I was thinking about Rafa Benitez, you know, winning with Liverpool, mm. but, that was his highlight. Mm -hmm. Whereas there was more highlights to come. And yep. also, correct me if I'm wrong, he won it two times in yes, the decade. He did, so he did. So I'm probably gonna go with Jose Mourinho for mm -hmm. that reason, because even the Inter Milan, that was a treble winning season as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he just showed that it's not a fluke. Yeah. I can I can do this again. So that would be mine, would be Jose Mourinho. Remember, we got to argue to pick one. Yeah. So we can't, or how do you want to do it? Do you want to have this is Harry's, this is Cam. We can, we can, or we can agree. We can agree. All right, cool, uh, like, we will see, we will yeah, see yeah, how yeah. it goes. I understand the Jose shout. And do you know what? I was thinking about it. on the way here, I was like, you know, it's got to be Jose because of his achievements, as you mentioned. Yep. When I think about the Champions League, a lot of times you think about that Jose t period, mm -hmm. especially how he came through, knocked out Man United. Just the swagger, mm -hmm. everything about it. But there is a manager who is the Mr. Champions League. Mm -hmm. And that's Carlo Ancelotti. And he produced some of the best sides we saw in the True. 2000s wow. with that AC Milan teams, yeah, bro. Yeah. Like they got to the final two times. Yeah. They won so he won two himself. Yeah. They lost in a final, we know at Istanbul, yeah. kind of embarrassingly, but mm. 03, he had a little embarrassing loss against Deportivo as well. But I just think when you look at Ancelotti, you think about it, he's the champion, he's Mr. Yeah. Champions League. He's won the most Champions Leagues and he's never been really known for his league form and stuff, but we always think about that AC Milan team. Yeah, I mean, I know we think about it, Jose's team, but that AC Milan team, Kaká at the at the diamond, tip of the diamond, Pielo at the bottom of it, Sidorf, Gattuso. Doing too much. Maldini, Cafu. Stam, Cafu, Ka you know, I'm getting Nesta, goosebumps. I'm getting goosebumps. Dida, it's crazy. Crespo, Shevchenko, Inzaghi. This was a team built by Ancelotti. And I just think when I think of that era, and I'm even thinking about as a Man United fan mm. coming up against them in 06, 07. I'll never forget what Kaka, Kaka. did. Kaka. And the, bro, you know, everyone talks about that game. People forget about 
the next game mm. where we went to the San Siro. Kaka scored again in the rain, seared off. Mm. We got brass streak. No, we no, no. Run up out of it San was, Siro. It was, it was a lesson Italy. that we got taught. A lesson. And we, we, we benefited from it. Mm. But I just think he might have to... You know what? It's because Jose has the personality. He, he, he always kind of put him okay, above. But so this is what my Ancelotti arg- did in that is, era... All right, cool. This is my argument with Ancelotti, yeah? Can I say something, though? Go on. Can we ignore that Jose didn't get to a final with Chelsea in that period? That he didn't? That he didn't. All right. Chelsea, mem- he should have delivered remember something. Remember the ghost goal? Yeah, I agree. That was a farce. Th- that was, there was a lot. And I think, like, with Barcelona getting to the final, you know, mm-hmm. we'll talk about the moments after. But I think with Jose, you could see what was working and, and what he was trying to do at Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Very unfortunate that he didn't do it. And I think different circumstances, he definitely would have got to a final and potentially won it as well. Mm-hmm. But I just think with Ancelotti, and this is not to say that he is not a great manager, because mm-hmm. people say he's not a great, he's not a coach, he's a manager. But with Jose, I think to, I don't think because there's not been another team that's done it mm-hmm. to beat, to go through all these teams and win a Champions League with mm-hmm. Porto. Yeah, I think that is for me the reason why it's not because all the other teams that you mentioned, Bayern Munich, Man United, mm-hmm. Barcelona, Real Madrid. AC Milan. These are teams that you expect to win these trophies. Mm. You don't expect Porto, Porto to do it. Or Inter. And, or, or Inter. You, Inter didn't, you didn't expect Inter is at that the time. A, yeah. If I'm correct, is that their first? Was that their first? That's their, no, that was, well, there was like their second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's their second. But the first but Champions League. Champions yeah. League, though. Maybe European, European Cup. Cup. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I think for me, that the, the, what he's done mm-hmm. for teams mm-hmm. in terms of where they were when he picked them up to where they end up going, yeah, mm. I think that trajectory is why I would pick Jose over uh, Ancelotti. If we're talking about over the the whole Champions League era, mm-hmm. then Ancelotti's got to be number one because he's won it with multiple clubs most, yeah. mo- most times. But th- that fact that I think Jose changed football. I don't think Ancelotti did. I think that Jose I was agree. was was someone that, wow, you know, we see we see Simeone now mm-hmm, kind mm-hmm. of being playing like mm-hmm. the way, you know managing his team the way that he did it. So you know, I you know good good argument. Thank you, no no, because the argument. thing is I'm trying to argue good with my boy. Good argument. Good, 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 good argument. Good yeah. argument. You know what? I'll go. I'll go with Jose one because yeah. I love Jose. I agree with it. But you made mm. a good argue. You made a good point when you said um, he changed the game, and yeah. he did. It's the way he came through. It's the way he beat the Manchester swagger, United. Man. And to be fair, winning it with two teams at like Inter and, and um, Inter Porto. and Porto is yeah. in, is incredible. Do you know what I'm saying? So you know what? I, I'll agree. And you know what? They were part of many iconic games as well. Yeah, the, even the Chelsea team, they were part of many iconic <sighs> games. So I don't, I don't mind giving it to Jose Mourinho. Okay, you know what? Cool. We'll give it to Jose. So Jose pause, Mourinho. Pause, pause, pause. pause. We ain't yeah, giving that to Jose. Still, yeah, I don't yeah, know about that. Will? Yeah, Who's Will? Give him the, uh, That's Will. Will. That's <laughs> Will, but Will, not Will. <laughs> um, manager of the decade, Champions League. Yeah. We can agree. Jose, Jose Mourinho. Mourinho yeah. Yep. And let us know in the comments, guys, what you think um, about our arguments and mm. who you would pick as well. Because this is, as much as we're doing it here, I want you guys to do it as well. Mm. Uh, feel free to be involved. I think I'll probably have put Fergie third, you know. Got to a final. Really? Yeah, we got to... No, we, we, we won. Oh, do you know what? We won it. We got to semis. We got to the next final, yeah. back to back. We oh, lost. bro, I can't lie to you. you See, know what I mean? like, so. Not just, just to be about Man United for a second, but the amount of times that we got to semi-finals oh, and mate. finals, yeah... Fergie's an incredible manager because I'm saying to man, yeah, so, like when I look at the team sheets of the like the games, yeah, there yeah, were way were better we teams than us, you know. How were we there, bro? Like personnel wise, there was way better teams than us, and I think the fact that the belief system, and even mm-hmm. when I spoke to Skulls uh, uh, on the interview, he was mm-hmm. basically speaking about mindset. He just believed we should be at these places. So yeah, credit to Fergie as yeah, well. Yeah, credit to Fergie. All right, cool. We'll move on from that one. So Jose Mourinho, you are the first one in there. Yeah. Congratulations. All right, cool. Um, best final. Oh, best final. I'm going to let you start with that one, actually. I'm going to start with this one. Go on. I went through the finals. I was looking yeah. at them. Some incredible moments. Yeah. Some mad moments. Zidane, that Come man on, over man. there. Boy, it has to be. And I don't want to say it. It hurts. Mm. Boy, it has to be Liverpool. AC it Miller. has to yeah, be I mean. Istanbul. What <sighs> the hell happened in that football match, bro? T- to this day, I don't know. It was 3-0 at half time. I saw some of the best football I've seen in that decade, in that first half. I just half. say, the pass by Kaka to Crespo, to this day, I don't think I've seen a better way of... <laughs> bro, and then the finish by Crespo. <laughs> 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 that's the first <laughs> fact. That's Azonto. He created bro, Azonto. Bro, he did the... You know, you know Burner Boy's yeah. new thing. Yeah. City yeah. Boys. Star- Boys. Star- Boys. <laughs> 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 he did the city boys. Man did this, bro. Oh, I'm telling man. you now, yeah. 
I, it was some of the best football. It was so dominant. It was mm. funny. Mm. I was watching it. Mm. And I was a kid these times. I was young these times. So my hate for Liverpool was only developing. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? I, I liked Steve. No, they were cool. The Bro, they man were cool. I'm not going to lie. Them days, yeah, I liked yeah, yeah. Steve. Man, they didn't understand the scope of the rivalry. Exactly. Yeah. So I was sitting there like, oh, this is kind of peak watching this Premier League team get cooked. But, and it was kind of hurt. I was kind of hurt. Yeah, I'll yeah. be honest. I was looking at Gerard like, yo. I kind of asked you just before you explain. Yeah. Did you have like a love for English teams when we got to the Yeah, because I did as well. When I was growing up, I think until I actually got onto Twitter. Yeah. I was support... Bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> it's until I got onto Twitter and was exposed to the fan bases. Yeah, yeah. I always supported Premier League teams in, in Europe. Nah, hey, yeah, hey. Always. I was like, let's link in the final, nah, bro. Course, Do you know what I'm course. saying? I always supported them. So... Anyway, so that was happening. Back to Ace Man. So Ace Man, they were playing some of the best football I've mm. seen. Crespo goal, Kaká pass. It was incredible. And then I'm just thinking, all right, it's done. Then second half, bro, Gerard comes out, scores the header. Benitez does a little bit of tactic change. Mm. Gerard comes out, scores the header. Does that, come on, mm. come on. I'm thinking, yeah, you know, Liverpool passion match. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the next thing you know, bro, spits up, vroom, like low drive. Mm. And then Alonso gets the penalty. Gerard. He dived, mm. 100%. But hey, you got to do what you got to do. Yep. No VAR era. Let's take advantage. You know what I mean? So then Alonso scores and you're thinking whatever. But Ace Man still, chance of mm. chance. Shevchenko, he just bottled that, that whole game. Chance of chance of chance. And then you get to penalty shootout. And then you get the iconic Dudek doing the whole, mm. you know, bro. He's the first time anybody started replicating what a goalkeeper does yeah. on the playground. Man were going in goal just to do the do deck. Bro, like, uh, on the it all playground. made it to games and stuff. Bro, you know what like, I'm saying? That yeah. was a part of a game where you could make your keeper yeah. put, put the players off and that. Bro, it was mad. And then obviously for Liverpool to go on and win, bro, from 3-0 down against, I got to read out the team. I actually just read it out earlier with yeah. them. But the team for Milan, Dida, Cafu, Yap Stam, Nesta, Maldini, Pirlo, Sirdov, Gattuso, Kaka, Crespo, Shachenko. Liverpool beat them with Dudek, Finnan, Carragher, Hippia, Traore, Alonso, Luis Garcia, Jared, Risa, Harry Kuehl and Milan, Milan Barros. Yeah, wow. Bruv. No, the fact that Jimmy Traore has got a Champions League medal, anything is possible, guys. Bro, anything he started. You want, he started. Anything you can, you can get. <laughs> you can bro, get. it's mad. So for me, yeah. that has to be the greatest final to ever happen in the Champions League. Man. What I mean, people might say 99, United's little come, comeback as well, yeah. but nah, this one was different. And imagine being a Liverpool fan going through that one. So I ain't going to lie. I think that's the best final we've yeah, ever had. Yeah, I, I think it's difficult to agree with that. I mean, even as a United fan, I remember when he was a kid and mm. when Liverpool had their one, it was like, oh, it was better because it's too mm. in the last minute, which, of course, is still up there with one of the best. But, Absolutely. But Liverpool's one, I think, everybody and their mum and their dad thought that game was done. They were basically just watching to see AC Milan lift the trophy and to see Liverpool literally. And, and you know what? Mm -hmm. It's Liverpool, but it's most importantly Steven Gerrard. That first goal... It rallied the troops. Mm -hmm. I think Steven Gerrard, even the, the lead up to get to that to that final, it was all him. The Olympiacos goal. Mm -hmm. There were so many moments that led up to to Steven Gerrard making his 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 mark yeah. there. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's difficult. When I think of the other games, I think maybe more like for the streets would probably be Arsenal Barcelona final mm. just because of what that meant. Yeah, you know, there were some sending offs in the final as yep. well. Jens Lehmann late but, goals. Late goals, but nothing compares to that. I think mm. Liverpool will always have the best Champions League final of all mm. time. I think there's there's no comparison to that as well. And even for them to get to the final two years later, obviously lose AC Milan yeah. as well, but they were an incredible team. But you know what's crazy, yeah? That 2006-2007 final, AC yeah. Milan-Liverpool, is one of the most forgettable finals I can think of. Do you know why? Like, it's, it's like it never happened. Every time I see it, I'm like, yeah. when did this match happen? Do you know why? I think it was more a get back. And yeah. I don't think... Even even how Liverpool got there, it was like, wow, you're here again. Yeah, yeah. That kind of thing. But I think if Liverpool had won again, mm. probably there would have been more noise. Than yeah. Anything. And I think that time, AC Milan, you kind of thought they should have won that yeah, game yeah, more yeah. than anything. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, ho horrible final because mm. I think Kite scored the last... Last time, and Inzaghi got... No, yeah, Inzaghi was man of the match that game. Yeah, yeah he's, the, if, uh, even the goal that Inzaghi scored... He hit his back or something. Yeah, it, it wasn't even like, um, yeah, I, I scored. He was, he was a poacher anyway. But yeah, but, um, yeah that Liverpool team will always go down in history. For me. Yeah. So yeah, I agree with you. You agree with that one, yep. yeah? All right, Easy. cool. So we got, we've got agreed so far yeah, on, yeah. on Jose Mourinho 
and Istanbul yes. as the as the best manager and best final. All right, now let's do let's move on to best team. Let's mm. who's the best team? And by the way, people, we're not doing it by club. We're doing it by individual season. Who's yeah. the best team? That Run you... me through uh, the teams again because this is like mm. I wanted to be. I wanted to do this spontaneously. I didn't want to go home and research. Mm. So talk to me. What's the team? Cool. So the winners from 2000, 2001. Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich. Real Madrid. 0102. Yep. Early Galacticos. Yeah. Milan. 0203. Mm. Porto. 0304. Liverpool. 0405. Barcelona. 0506. Milan. 0607. Manchester United. 0708. Barcelona. 0809. Inter Milan. 0910. Who is the best team to win the Champions League in that decade. All right. Now it's between for me AC Milan. Actually it's AC Milan. AC Milan. Yeah. Which I'm, year? 0607. I, I think it's the year that they, they even lost to flipping to, to <laughs> Liverpool. I'll be honest. I think <laughs> But they built that side up. So they built the side up because that team obviously had Yap Stam in the team and then obviously he left when they won it again. Mm. Um I just think on paper and in the, like when you watch them, mm -hmm. I just felt like they were the greatest European team. I mm. think Italian football, they were the they were the you know the poster boys yeah. for Italian football. Honorable mention though, mm. Manchester United's mm -hmm. team. <laughs> like when I think of no that sleep on that, that team, that bro. attacking five, mm -hmm. so to speak, of you know Ronaldo, you've got Rooney, Rooney. you've got Tevez. You've got a young giggler. Mm -hmm. You've got Skulls. Mm -hmm. You've got Rio, Vidic, mm. Van der Sar, mm. Evra. Like for me, that was the best English team by a mile. I don't think there was, obviously, you know, Chelsea were really good as well, mm -hmm. but they couldn't win the Champions League that season, love. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm going to go with AC Milan for me. I just think AC, AC. Milan, the team, the team that they won the Champions League with mm -hmm. um, two years later after they lost it, I think for me, that would be the best team. Yeah. Just, you haven't seen a team that complete in Italian football and I mm -hmm. think in European football for a while and, until obviously we saw the Barcelona team. So I'll go with that AC Milan team. You know what? That's a tough one, mm. but I'm not going to lie. It's interesting because the three teams that I think are in this question, mm. I think we're also sleeping on 0102 Real Madrid. Okay. With, with Zidane there, the early Galactic before R9 came. So that was Figo, that was Zidane, that was Makaleli still there, Raul. That team was incredible. Carlos like on paper, there. Roberto Carlos. Early young Casillas as well. Unbelievable team. Unbelievable team when you're actually mm. thinking about it. But I actually think the three complete teams are actually the Milan team, mm -hmm. Manchester United team, and the Barcelona team. Mm. Now, when I look at that, and that's three consecutive years as well. Mm. So 06, 07, they beat us. Mm. And we kind of use that as fuel for the next season. And we end up going to win the Champions League, right? But when I look at that, yeah, obviously we added Tevez as well and mm. stuff. But I look at that Manchester United 07, 08 team. And I think they would beat Milan's 06, 07 team. True. I think, <clears throat> obviously we're going... Machine for machine with Kaká yeah. and Ronaldo, like yeah, yeah, Ballon yeah, d'Or yeah, for yeah. Ballon d'Or, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know who would win that one at that point, <laughs> but I gotta go with Cristiano. I think that year experience, I think we're a better team. But then there's one step above that, mm. and that's that Barcelona. Yeah, team. yeah, yeah. We went to Barcelona, Samuel Eto. bro. We went to Barcelona <laughs> hey. stacked. Mm. We went to Barcelona stacked in Rome. You know what I mean? We had, we had, we had the defending champions. Mm. Everyone's a year on. Ronaldo's now, it's now Ronaldo v Messi. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's what has That's assembled. What kicked it, off. it was like, Kaka, safe. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your contribution. Mm -hmm. It's our era now. Like, mm -hmm. now we're going gunshot for gunshot. You get mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. And we got schooled, bro. Yeah. We got schooled. We got schooled again two years later. Mm -hmm. But this year was the year we came stacked. Mm -hmm. 2010, 2011, we weren't ready. We shouldn't have been in that final. We were not good enough to be on the pitch at Barcelona. But 2008, 2009. That was the time. I, bro, I remember going into that. Everyone was like, hold on, we might win this. Because mm. the game before, Chelsea took them all the way. Mm. But Barcelona got to the final. Once the first five, ten minutes got out of the way, they settled. Mm. Bopped it. Iniesta, Xavi, Busquets. It was like, yeah, I was playing centre-back. Mm. Mm. Messi scored. Eto, Thierry Henry. On paper, it's a ridiculous team. That was a ridiculous team, team And yeah. then on the actual pitch, what they can produce, I haven't seen a level like that. 
in the Champions League in that decade. Mm. So I ain't going to lie, as much as it hurts, I would personally put Manchester United second. Yeah, I'd put Real Madrid in there. I'd put Milan in there. Barcelona's 06 team was cool, but I have to go with Barcelona 08-09. I just think the ascendance, the, the arrival of Messi, mm. the experience of Henri. Like, what's he doing so high in the what's air? What's he doing there, bro? Come and that on, pass man. by Xavi was just... Inch perfect. But yeah, you know what? It was a schooling. I got. I, I, I agree. I, I, I got to go Barcelona. I get the Milan one because the team on paper, Kaká, he was so exciting, bro. It was just different. But Barcelona, man. Yeah. All right. I, I'm gonna agree Barcelona. just because. Um. Because me personally, I was thinking about that team mm. and I was just like, I, I kind of felt like Man United and Barca were a little bit levels at the time, mm. and that is what. Took yeah. Them. They, they they showed us that we are not near them in any capacity mm -hmm. whatsoever. And then obviously Ronaldo leaving and so on and so forth. And then that kind of was the demise of Man United. Yeah. Because going into that next final that we faced against them, we was just a shadow of the team mm -hmm. that we was previously. So yeah, that Barcelona team. When you mentioned the names there, that was like the start of Lionel Messi. Yeah. That was Henri's first Champions League. Yeah. Um. So yeah. It was. It's, I can't listen, even, I can't we're even talking argue. about some elite, team, elite But that team. Milan team, though, wow. Peak. Bro, let us, guys, let yeah, us know yeah, in the like, comments let me know if all you think of this I should have well. uh, stood up for it yeah, a bit more, bro. but I just think because maybe it's because it's my team that, mm -hmm. that, that got beat. Yeah. And I witnessed, <laughs> I witnessed greatness. I was like, damn. Let us know in yeah. the comments what you guys think. Who's the best team in the decade? Make sure you guys are letting us know as well the whole yeah. who you guys think in all of these lists. So we've yeah. done best final, best team, best manager. Mm. Now, we're going to go for... The best underdog story. We don't have to go too long in it. Yeah. But who is the best underdog story of the 2000s Champions League era? I think we know. Who you got? Okay. I don't think it's... Bro, this I ain't think, easy. I think personally, yeah, it's, it's, it's again, it's two Jose Mourinho teams for me. You think? Yeah. I think that, that Porto, yeah, it's, it's the only mm. underdog story because look... If you mention all the winners, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich. They've repeated. Uh, they've repeated and they are in the finals because they've been here before. You know, I think if you've only won it once and you've won it in that way, you go to uh, Old Trafford in the court, I think it was the quarterfinals. Mm. You go and beat Man United at Old Trafford. You beat Sir Alex Ferguson, the iconic running down the touchdown yeah. from, Porto, from, from Jose Mourinho. And then to go and convincingly beat Monaco in the final, mm -hmm. Deco scored an incredible... Like, that. It was... A lot of players got announced mm -hmm. in that Ooh, game, but I don't point. think anybody would have known or would have thought that Jose Mourinho's Porto, because not not a lot. I didn't know who Jose Mourinho was. Mm. None of these people knew who he was. Obviously, if, unless you've been, you know, you watched Barcelona yeah. back in the day and you saw that he was working with Bobby Robson. But apart from that, no one. Yeah. And I think for that reason, there's not been another underdog story in the Champions League mm. because it's it's all good getting to the semi final mm. and the quarter final. Oh, great! They they done really mm. well, but to go and win it, win it. For me, I don't think there's any there's anyone better. Also, the Inter Milan one as well. To beat that 0-9-10 Barcelona team was it mad, bro. Like, and, and I remember the whole yeah yeah. Like it, it it was like Pep was basically that pissed Pep off <laughs> so much that he said, you know what. We are. I don't think. I think after that game, I mm. think he stayed in the stadium, <laughs> sat down, and said, came up one with the grass and said, "You will work for me more than you believe, <laughs> more than you believe." And I think that was what started off the whole Jose and Pep mm. era as well. But yeah, for me, I think um, it's easy. That's a good me. point. Uh, it's a, it, uh, what, you know what, what would your one be? What would your one be? Porto would be up there because I was yeah. sitting there yesterday. I was thinking, imagine Porto winning the Champions League today. Mm. What? We'll be like, what? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it'll be. Yeah, it's like when Greece won the, the Euros. It's literally. And do you know what? That was in the same year. Mm. So, which is mad. So, which is kind of weird. It was a very underdog year. But, so that was just something different. Do you know what I mean? I think that's definitely there. But then, obviously the Inter Milan as well. But then also, we were just talking about it earlier. Is Liverpool not an underdog story? Is Liverpool <sighs> not an underdog story with that side too? When you go back to Gerard Olympiacos mm. moment. Mm. Then, okay, they played Chelsea, ghost goal, but I don't think they had any right going through against Chelsea at that mm. time. This mm. was the Chelsea, 15 goal Chelsea, you know, mm. conceded Chelsea. I don't think they had any right going through. Anfield was on fire. And then going to the final against Milan and losing 3 0 mm. and then turning it round to go and win. That's an underdog hey, okay, story so of all underdog stories, too. I don't think we. I think this one. I think this one we might have to give to the audience. Yeah, you know, no, because right, cool. so, the story of Jose is unreal and yeah. Porto as well. But that story of Liverpool is unbelievable as well. Bro. Right, okay, cool. So with Liverpool, yeah, I think 
personnel is probably why you probably thought, oh my God, they're never going to win this because mm-hmm. you said Jimmy Traore and all those people. But Carragher was still a, a, a decent centre-back. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they had good players in the team. So even though, obviously, you know, AC Milan, like you say, they were a much better team, one mm. of the best teams ever. When they won it, you kind of was like, it wasn't about Liverpool actually not being good enough. It's just that AC Milan was so good and it was, and they was 3 new up at mm-hmm. half time. So I think the circumstances made it more of an underdog story than the actual mm. fact, which was who the fuck are Porto and what yeah. are they doing in the okay. final? Yeah, I get that. And and like we're seeing players like R- Ricardo Carvalho, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Deco, Boswinger, mm-hmm. a young Ever in that game as well for Monaco. Like these, this yes, was a yeah. time. This was a time where you get me. Mm-hmm. Players weren't. You get, was Morientes playing in that game as well? Yeah, yeah. I'm saying like it, it was for me. I just felt like Jose announced himself and announced Port. Like he will always be a legend in mm-hmm. Porto's in Porto's history, just because you done something that nobody believed would happen. Mm. Whereas with Liverpool, they got to the final. So mm-hmm. if they had started off the game one two and was winning two nil, mm. you would think, right, that's Liverpool. It's mm. just Liverpool's time. Mm. Plus they've got history. So it's like. I, I hear it is it's an underdog story, but, but it's anyway, tough. we'll leave it with you guys. Yeah, I'm looking at their run. I'm looking at Liverpool's run. They had Bayer Leverkusen, you would expect them to beat. Yeah. Then they had Juventus, which mm. you wouldn't have expected them to potentially beat. Was that Juventus uh, match fixing Juventus? The, I think they were did, starting to did, go did, go through that little did period. Did they lose some players at that time? No, no, oh, no, 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 not yet, yet. not yet, no. Okay. So 04 05. The Juventus, which are a good team, then they beat Chelsea mm-hmm. and then they beat Man. I think that's a mad run, bro. It's mm-hmm. a mad run as well. So, hey, we'll leave that to the people. We'll leave, you guys. we'll leave that to people. Was it the Porto 2004 or Liverpool 2005? Or even any other yeah, yeah. finals that you maybe feel Inter, like. yeah. maybe Inter as well. So I'm kind of going for the the the. You know what? It's, I'll leave that to the people. That yeah, one, that, one, that, one is, <laughs> that one is tough. That one is tough. So we haven't agreed on that one. Yeah. All right, cool. This one's going to be interesting. We've got two more. So we've got best player of the 2000s. I'm going to leave that last. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to do the biggest moment. Mm. The biggest moment. Not story. Yeah. Not the biggest moment. Mm. Here you go. All right. So there's one I have to say just before we I go, f- you know, and say my um, biggest moment. It would have to be the Arsenal-Barcelona game. Mm. Um, two moments, I think, that changed the scope of also Barcelona's Champions League career mm. but also Arsenal not being able to win one I think had they have won that final they would have gone on to be one of the powerhouses mm. in European football um, and I think, it, I think it was Jens Lehmann getting sent off in that final I think um, him getting sent off and was it Almunia that came on yeah yeah. Uh, him coming on and he did okay but it just made it a bit difficult for Arsenal mm-hmm. and I think had they have scored the chance with Thierry Henry as well these moments in the games I think they they you know, they changed the scope mm-hmm. of European football, I think, in my opinion. But that's not my biggest moment. I just want to do an honourable mention. Okay. You just want to get an Henri shot yeah. in there. No, no, just a little jab. Yep. Um, <laughs> but um, no, you know, I'm a massive Henri fan. I'm just, I'm just pulling fun. It's just Arsenal fans. I hate them with all my life. <laughs> um, but it would have to be Zinedine Oy. Zidane Zizou. <laughs> He's volley against Bayer Leverkusen. Now, I think... That goal was so important that people forget that Raul right? scored two, uh, a goal in that game. Yeah, yeah. Roberto Carlos got two assists in that game. Yeah. For me to be able to stand in one place, watch the ball for, like you said, about mm-hmm. a few seconds, hit it with your your weaker foot, <laughs> top bins, and it curled in. It's the the most iconic goal in Champions League history mm-hmm. for me personally, and I, I think agree. that just showed the level of where Zinedine Zidane was and. For me, it's something that, you know, like you see it in adverts that when Champions League are doing stuff, you, you speak about, when people speak about the, the greatest goals, that's got to be in the top five. I, I, think, best. I think for it's me, it's the, the best, best Champions League goal of all time. It's the best. The greatest moment, I think for me, in, in, in Real Madrid's Champions League history for mm. me personally, just because they didn't go for it. Yeah, for me personally. Sergio Ramos equalised against Atletico. 19. Yeah, but, okay. Do, do you know what? That was good. That was good. Don't get me wrong. But for me, I'm saying for me, I'm not a Real Madrid fan, yeah. but I'm saying for me, when yeah, I watch yeah, Real yeah, Madrid, yeah, yeah. that's the one I think of. Yeah, I, I think with the with the Champions League final against Atletico Madrid, I think if you're a Madrid fan, mm. that means more because it's like against your yeah, rivals, yeah, yeah. isn't it? But just for the, the you as a neutral, the game, as a neutral for me, that was it. So that would be my, my best yeah. moment. I you? think that was the one of the greatest displays of technical ability ever. Ever. And I know people talk about Bale's goal. Mm. I know people talk about, I remember Dejan Stankovic scored one mad goal. Even so Mandzukic m- as well bro, scored a crazy yes, goal in the final yes, as well. Ronaldo's overhead. There's so many goals that have been scored. But honestly, the technical <laughs> ability you need to score that goal is 
it's a different level, bro, honestly. So that's a big one. But do you know what? Mm. My one has a bit of depth to it. It has a bit, it's a bit of layers to it. All right, cool. I'm going to go with the biggest moment in Champions League history in the 2000s was the Iniesta goal mm. versus Chelsea. Good in mention. Good mention. Good mention. Bro, that changed history. Mm. That goal changed history. Mm. Chelsea, first of all, had all these penalty shouts. It was crazy. We got an he icon- said disgrace. Oh, just about to say. He said disgrace. <laughs> we got an iconic moment yeah. in the It's a Disgrace by Drogba. But the shout out to James Walcott, mm. the ripple effect mm. of that Iniesta goal, it changed the course of history. Man United had just got to a back to back finals. Mm. Chelsea were about to go to back to back finals. It was about to be a Man United Chelsea repeat. Mm. Yeah. Anything could have happened in that final. Man United could have went and won again, mm. but Chelsea could have won and won their first one at that point. That basically established Barcelona mm. to go on and be this one of the greatest club sides that we've ever seen. Yep. That was the birth of it. That moment in the 90th minute, Iniesta putting it top bins, it completely changed, changed history. The game, yeah. it, 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 it won Messi his first Ballon d'Or. Mm. When you think about it, that what if not Ronaldo was, could have won another Ballon d'Or. Mm. Like, do you know how much of history could nah, have changed it is, it is. if Ronaldo Fair went place. two up yeah. or Messi didn't win his first one or Chelsea won that? It completely changed history. And from there, Barcelona went to be the dominant team up until Real Madrid um, started taking over again. But we don't know. Bro, that was Pep's first Champions League. Mm. If Imagine if Pep didn't win it at that time in his first season, the treble. Mm. They'd be calling him Fraudiola. Football would have been different. Yeah, completely different. Everything we know right now of Barcelona, Pep Guardiola, Messi, mm. could have changed mm, mm. with Iniesta's right foot. I, I agree, because I, when what? I watched that, yeah, I said, how? How? Like, it left me stunned, because like you said, there was chances, SEM's goal was yeah. mad as well. Like, oh, bro, you're right, you know? That changed. That is it, that's it. That there changed is. football history, mm. bro. Like, bro, every time I think about that, I'm like, mm. just what if Iniesta hit the post? All right, can I ask you them? Yeah. Because when we're talking about biggest moment, I've, I'm looking at it from the moment I remember. Yes. That goal is ov- obviously something that mm-hmm. it's even more important than, than anything that I <laughs> think Barca has done after that. Because <laughs> it, it changed everything, yeah? But do you think Barcelona beaten, because that was their first Champions League when they beat Arsenal. Yeah? Yes, yes. Do you think that moment was more important mm. than, than the Iniesta one? Or do you think that, because Frank Rijkaard won the Champions League with them. Yes. And... Ronaldinho won the Ballon d'Or that year as well. Mm. Now, I don't think ba- he wins that Ballon d'Or if if Henri wins. Yeah. If, if, if ja- so Henri wins the Ballon d'Or if Arsenal win mm. that. Do you think that moment is as important mm. or do you think the Iniesta goal is even more important? Because this is the beginning of the Iniesta. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like The thing about that one, yeah, is that I watched some doc- documentary about Ronaldinho when he joined. He saved Barcelona. Yeah. He brought them back. And when they won it, that was like a crowning moment. But the reason why I say it's more important is because after that final, mm. Barcelona started sliding a little bit. 06, 07 was all right. 07, 08 was all right. They needed that resurgence. Mm. And it's the figurehead of Pep as well, mm. which is why mm. I'm adding it. Rijkaard won it in his own way, mm. but Pep brought back Barcelona. Mm. He brought back Cruyff. He brought back Le Messiah. Yeah, he yeah. brought back what they were all about, like as a, as a DNA. Mm. And he changed the landscape of how football is. Mm. When we see football, bro, remember when Tiki Taka first landed? Oh, bro. <laughs> what? Man, we'll go on YouTube and watch. What? I remember uh, Wembley, yeah, when um, Man United was playing yeah. for Barcelona, there was a clip that came up on Sky Sports mm. of them training. Yeah. My brother. I watched that for eight minutes. Bruv, I swear Pep football created diagrams. Yeah, yeah. You go on YouTube and be like, you watch Busquets body faints. Mm. Boom. The diagram here. Mm. The pass is meant to go this way, but, it's... but the intelligence of him have made it yeah, go yeah, that, that way. way. <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> what am I watching? I, like I was like learning science, yeah, bro. Yeah, it, it, was, was it was mad, bro. So I think that one is more important because I, I keep saying, imagine if he didn't score. Yeah. It would have just looked like a uh, pretty football team, but mm. you can't handle the athleticism of United or mm. Chelsea. It would have just... Man, I can't even get near them. Bruv, it is just... Yeah, yeah. I agree. I just think that is mad, bro, I like agree, when you I think agree. about it. So I would say that's the biggest moment just because of the yeah. effect. That, but your your final shout of Zidane, I think yeah. that's a great shout. Yeah, of course. I, th- I think for bro, that... We'll forever see that goal. Zidane, I think years. as a moment, yeah, but it didn't change football. Mm-hmm. I think what you're saying is why I think it's the biggest moment for that era because mm. it changed football. I think 
maybe the Arsenal one was more of a stronger shout just because if Arsenal win that Champions League. Imagine if League, Arsenal won the Champions League. I'm League. telling you, it changes everything. Imagine no, if Arsenal like, won I'm the Champions I'm just thinking League. about most of the players that left, probably they left because they couldn't win a Champions mm -hmm. League. And it was I end think, of the road. Yeah, it was end of the road. And I think Henri being the last of the, mm -hmm. you know, world-class players, so to speak, yeah. obviously before the, um, Fabregas, you know, initially yeah, became yeah. who he became, yeah. Yeah, and I just think that moment changed the way football was because if Barcelona don't win that Champions League, what yeah. happens? We were talking about Ronaldinho in a totally different light as totally well. Totally different like, light. No Ballon d'Or. Mm. No light. You know what I'm trying to say? So, yeah, it was an important moment. But I, 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 I'm going to agree with yeah. you. Madness. Say that, that Iniesta goal uh, was probably the most important <laughs> moment in that year because what happened after mm -hmm. was because of that. Insane. Insane. But that was a nice one. That was yeah. a nice one. That was good. Last one. Jeez. Last one. I promise you people, mm. I have been walking. I have not I have not agreed on who it no, is no, in no. my head. I was I was even messaging Liaz. Yeah. I was like, yo, is it? Da, da, da. He's like, nah, but da, da. we were going back and forth in the morning, <laughs> 9 a.m., bro. Yeah, yeah 9 a.m., bro. So this one is the best player of the 2000s. Mm. All right. Just want to say. I looked through. Can I just say something? Say some names for me. I looked through the players of the year. I don't think anybody, I think one person repeated, but I looked through midfielder of mm. the year. I looked through defender of the year. Nobody dominated. Mm. The only people to really dominate their position at that time is actually John Terry. Mm. John Terry won three defenders of the year. Mm. Everyone else, uh, nobody else had won any three of anything. Mm. It it was it was Deco this year, Kaká this year, Steven Gerrard this year, um, Ronaldo this year. Mm. Uh, br bruv, like nobody, nobody dominated this era. Mm. It's not like the, the next era where Modric, Modric was winning all the midfield of the player. years. And that. I've got my player camps. Yeah. I know who my player is. Mm, mm. Three Champions League <laughs> in that year. An African giant. No burner boy. Yeah. Hey. He won it with Bartha. Mm -hmm. And he won it with Inter Milan. Mm -hmm. Scoring against elite goalkeepers, elite defenders. For me, African's best player of all time. Yep. And I think with him, yeah, because he doesn't talk about how good he is, people don't don't give him the respect that he deserves. I'm talking about Samuel Eto'o, bro. Mm. That's the player, bro. Who's, who's done what he's done and be so important in every final, bro? Like, bro, Samuel Eto'o for me, yeah, the story of how he started from being kind of pushed to the side like, at Real Madrid, then going to Mallorca and being a bagsman, mm -hmm. getting bought by Barcelona and being their striker, being their number As an man. African man. As an African man, bro. And I think maybe because, maybe if he played for France, mm. there'll be different respect to be given to him. But percent. Samuel Eto'o was the most clutch player of that generation in terms of, get me in the final, I'll show you what's done. Mm. Very difficult to play against, strong, can score. D done it for Inter Milan, mm. done it for Barcelona twice. Mm. Against Arsenal and against Man United. Mm. Like, what more do you want? And the thing is, guy? he scored the equaliser against Arsenal Bro. and he scored the opening goal against Samuel Eto'o, goaded. So that's mm. that's my player of the year. Bro, Dude, I can't lie. Yeah, my boy. It's peak. <laughs> Samuel. That's a good one. That's a good one. On pure facts, Yeah, that's a good one. Because I'm sure he might probably is the player that has won the most yeah. in that period. That's a good one, you know. I wrote that to Liaz, the, yeah. the the joke man, and he ignored that one as yeah, well. Yeah, because he, he didn't have the knowledge. Liaz for that wanted one, it to be an Algerian. Bro. <laughs> he wanted it to be an Algerian. But like. you know what? I'm not gonna lie. Mm. Your claim is probably stronger. Yeah. But when I think about the Champions League 2000s, I know where you're going. I think of a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think of a guy, and he's behind me right now. Why? That. <laughs> <laughs> oh my hey yo hey yo yo that's my worst one ever not of all time whoa that's crazy that is mad. and you said it with joy <laughs> that's mad wow but <laughs> yes back to a regular proceeding <laughs> yeah Ronaldinho man <sighs> I know I know Re I know bro Ronaldinho, when I think of the 2000s, man, like, mm. bro, he made me as a kid, yeah, mm. look forward to Europe like like nothing else, yeah. bro. I used to watch La Liga, we all, everyone had Sky, yeah. all that type of stuff, but Ronaldinho, 
bro, how many church shoes did he? How many shoes did he ruin? Yeah, in the playground, he's trying got, to do the he's got a lot of invoices he needs to pay for. Bro, the shoes. tell you that shoe zone, all them type of play. He, he was making, he was making them <laughs> bare bread. <laughs> <laughs> Bruv, I'm telling you, the f- the flip flaps, the game against AC Milan, the game where he bodied John Terry onto the floor, mm. the, the, as I'm saying, the toe poke goal, mm. obviously winning the Champions League, just the general magic he gave that competition. Mm. And I keep saying, you're looking at who dominated that era. Nobody dominated it mm. like that. Zidane had his moments and Ronaldinho, Kaká, Ronaldo, mm. Eto, whoever. But when I look at R- R- Ronaldinho, and you're talking about that team that Eto scored in. Mm. The linchpin of that team was Ronaldinho. No, of course, of course. Now in the final, he wasn't really he wasn't really out here in the 2006 final. But the linchpin was Ronaldinho. Mm. The the reason why everyone believed Real, Barcelona could do it was because of Ronaldinho. Mm. And the thing about Ronaldinho is more than just what did he score? Did he get a goal? Did he get an assist? Or no. did he score in the final? It's more about just watch him and see what he does. And bro, the guy was box office, home, away, wherever, mm. and. There might not even be a factual claim to what I'm saying, mm. but I just when I just think of the 2000s, I think of Ronaldinho, bro. 100%. I, I just think, I'm, that one is purely on feeling, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yours was on is very factual yeah, and yeah. that is solid, but, but mine's just on feeling. Yeah, yeah. I, I I watched the game on. I'm a feeling man, so I mm. don't care about stats. Yeah. You could score 900 goals. And everyone in the world could call you the best player. But when I watch you, like, it's similar to, like, players like Eden Hazard. Mm-hmm. Like, I think when I watched him, I just thought no one was better than him in the world. But mm-hmm. Ronaldinho, for me, like what you said, it's just, I don't know anyone that could do what he was doing at the time. And that's why I feel like he was so different to everyone mm-hmm. else. There's obviously great strikers. And Samueto is probably, there's the reason why there's even a claim for whoever's a better striker than him is because... The, the aim of a striker is to score goals. Mm-hmm. It's not about really about anything else apart from goal scoring. If you can add other attributes to your game, great. But this man had everything. Mm-hmm. He had entertainment. He had goals. He had assists. Some mm-hmm. people forget how much of an incredible passer the ball he was. People forget he used to put down massive yeah. numbers massive as well. Massive numbers of assists. <laughs> is that, it's like, so in terms of that era, I think you're right. Uh, Ronaldinho was probably the name yeah. that you spoke about the most. Yeah. Along with Zidane, obviously just for that moment mm-hmm. alone. But... I would agree with that Ronaldinho, but I, I can't go yeah, past Eto'o, Eto, man. Eto, bro, like, because when it comes down to it, in a final, he was there. He was there, he ever was present. There. He what was more there. do you want from the man? Mm. Three Champions Leagues, two with Barcelona, one with Inter Milan. Mm-hmm. Allow me. Back to back as well. Bro, so he, he said, oh, back you, look, back. you look over there? Well, I'm going over here. Yep. And we're going to win it. Come on, bro. Treble mm. as well. Yeah. Bro, he's a, he's an elite man, man. Don't get don't get gassed because you saw him at Everton and Chelsea. Yeah, that was yeah, like yeah. when he was done. Still bagged a hat trick against us. For Chelsea, <laughs> West. Nah, do you know we what? We are so watched. how how we're so we let Eto with Mohican. Oh, that's not I, even I, Mohican. He had a side. Trim and yeah, he had yeah, 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 yeah. I it was blonde. Or Bro, something, I, something crazy. I, I, I oh, might yeah. have been. And we let him bag hat trick. Hmm. Listen, we'll end it on that. Yes. Listen, let us know who you, who yours is for the best player of the decade. That is the one that I'm most most interested in yeah. because it's so hard when you think about it people honestly like mm. you can even throw some defenders in there Maldini of course you can throw in John Nesta Terry as well that Stam you know who has a shout well? bro Steven Gerrard has a yeah. shout he was incredible in that in, I can't in, lie. That, I, in that period do you know what speaking with Skulls mm-hmm. and obviously someone who's played against him mm-hmm. and, and with him as well the respect that Steven Gerrard needs is is very very high uh, I think when course. we're talking about England's most important Player, it's very difficult to to mm-hmm. do that. But when you talk about in in, in English history, Steven Gerrard's up there, top five. He's up there time. for me. Just top because five. I just uh, for, for me, bro. I, it's what yeah. I've watched because other people will say Gaz Gascoigne, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. some people will say other players, Kevin Keegan, even mm-hmm. because of what he done. But when I watch Steven Gerrard, even for England, bro, he he, he didn't have the problem that Skulls had, which is we can't find a place mm. for him. Wherever he, like when he played where he played, he did it. I think Gerard is the one that they should have moved around because he's the one that's got the most. He's more athletic. About he's him. more I athletic. Think, that was crazy. Think, but yeah, Steven yeah. Gerard, absolute icon. Gerard's up there. Henri, I think scored the most goals, but yeah. you know, he only got to one final, but he, I think he, in that period, he, great he scored the most. Though. Yeah, he scored. Great, the, great moments. Great like, moments. Real Madrid moment. Uh, San Siro. San Siro. The hat trick as well. Sparta Prague goal. That goal was, Henri oh, Henri had moments. I think he scored the most goals. Um, there's, 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 there's sleepers, man. There's there's people like Shevchenko who always were Van Nistelrooy, well. Van Nistelrooy but yeah. Van Nistelrooy just knockout rounds. We just weren't yeah, yeah. doing well enough. But he got a couple golden boots. Raúl can't forget Raúl in the early days. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm trying to say. So scored in two finals. Yeah, there's so many 
Even Steve so McManaman. Man got man got the yeah, the, <laughs> that was some form. Some book some tea form thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, honestly, Cristiano towards the end yeah, as yeah. well, two finals. But Ronaldo is funny. He never scored in his first 26 games in the Champions League. Then he scored against Roma in that 7-1. We lost against Milan. But then from there, Ronaldo became, went yeah. off. Messi to end the, the, the decade, 08-09, 09-010. <laughs> Inter knocked them out. But he was different in that. Remember the four goals against Arsenal? Yeah, yeah. So many players. But I'm going Ronaldinho. You're going Samuel Eto. Let yeah. us know what you guys think. And I'll leave it to you to... Wrap up the show. Yeah. Well, that's been the Inside Scoop with Harry Panera, Culture Cams. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and click that <laughs> notification bell so you are notified when we upload. And please let us know how you think we've done in, uh, with our you know, mm -hmm. analysis of uh, the 2000s Champions League era. And please be in the comments as well, man, because you're and engaged. If you want to see really more up. as well. Yeah, if, if you want to see more, let us know. Bro. Like, honestly, guys, whatever you guys want to see, we're here to do it for you guys. Every Wednesday, we'll be filming for you guys. So love and guidance, man. Peace.